In this video, we will solve a problem on intertemporal choice. This question was asked by a brother on YouTube. The question is like this. Suppose a person lives for two periods. His current period income is $42,000 and he possesses an asset of worth 18k okay $18,000 his future income is expected to be $33,000 and the real rate of interest at which he can borrow or save is 10% okay his current and future maximum consumption will be we need to find out what can he consume maximum in the current period uh, or what can he consume uh, maximum in the future period okay so the options are $90,000 and $99,000 respectively in period 1 and 2. Similarly, we have 42K, 33K, 75K in both periods or 60K and 51K. Okay. So let's try to figure out how to solve this very question. What we are being given here, let us write it here. So we are being given that we have the two periods. Okay. So in the first period, uh, let's denote M1. M1 is the income in the first period which is forty two thousand dollars okay also we are being told he possesses an asset of 80 80 18 sorry eighteen thousand dollars okay so let's denote it by a so a is equal to obviously a1 is equal to eighteen thousand dollars okay also we are being told that uh, in the second period uh, the income is expected to be $33,000 okay and we are being told that he can borrow or uh, save at the real interest rate of 10% and we can write it as 0 0.1 okay now <clears throat> how can we solve this type of question first we need to uh, find out the lifetime budget constraint and how do we solve that very thing okay so I explained that very stuff in the earlier video but I will give some uh, I will try to recapitulate how do we form that very lifetime budget constraint and then come to the question okay so let's denote c1 denotes the consumption in uh, let me write it here let us denote c1 the consumption in first period okay I will not write so I don't have the space here okay so let us denote c1 is the consumption in the first period which will be equal to okay so we know the income in the first period is 42,000 and asset he is uh, owning uh, in the first period is 18,000 okay let's denote m capital okay let me write it here so let us denote m uh, capital m1 equal to the income in the first period plus the asset he is owning in the first period okay then uh, what will be the consumption in the first period consumption in the first period will be equal to the total uh, wealth that is m1 in the first period okay plus whatever he is saving or borrowing so let's take the example of he is saving in the first period that means he is saving some part of his income okay so how can we uh, denote the savings savings is simply uh, whatever he uh, you know whatever he is consuming sorry whatever he is his wealth that is m1 minus what he is consuming okay that is c1 okay i hope i am making myself clear so um, consumption in the first period will be equal to total wealth in the first period plus what he is saving okay that will be equal to the consumption in the first period okay so we are uh, here assuming that he is uh, the saver okay now what will be the consumption in second period so consumption in the second period will be equal to the income in second period that is m2 small m2 okay plus whatever he has saved that is this very uh, thing he has saved in the first period so let me write here capital m1 minus c1 okay plus uh, the interest he is earning on uh, this uh, savings that denoted by r times m1 minus c1 okay so this is the consumption in the second period so let's uh, try to solve it further so we have c2 is equal to small m2 plus okay take uh, this m1 minus c1 common we are left with 1 plus r okay so our c2 will be equal to 
C2 is equal to M2, okay? Plus we can write it like this. If I write here M1 and multiply it with 1 plus R, then we have minus C1, 1 plus R, okay? Simple mathematics here. No bakwas at all. Or we can just uh, transpose this term here. That means C2 uh, plus C1 1 plus R is equal to M2 plus M1 1 plus R. Okay, what does this tell us? It simply tells us future value of lifetime consumption. That means this denotes our uh, future value of our consumption. Okay, should be equal to, you know, uh, this uh, future wealth of our present income or wealth in this case. Now let's uh, write this in the present value. To write this in present value, we will uh, divide both sides by 1 upon R. So we have so we have C2 upon 1 plus R. Okay, I'm just skipping some steps. I know you can do it very well. Okay. So let me write it again here because I don't think it will come uh, in the writing space here. Okay. So let me write this step again. Oh, on the top, you have appreciation. So we have we have C2, C2 transposing this here, it will become C1, 1 plus R is equal to m2 plus capital m1 1 plus r this is our future value of lifetime consumption okay should be equal to future value of lifetime you know income now let's write this into the present value of future consumption okay so to write this in present value of future consumption what will we uh, write here so we will divide both sides by 1 up plus r, 1 plus r, here also 1 plus r, okay. Then we have here c2, 1 plus r, plus c1, so 1 plus r, 1 plus r will get cancelled. We have here m2 upon 1 plus r, then we have this 1 plus 1 will get cancelled, okay, m1. This is our... A present value of future consumption okay so this denotes our present value of future uh, this denotes present value of future income this denotes our present value of future consumption okay so uh, this requires that present value of future consumption should be equal to present value of disposable income okay now we can construct the budget constraint here okay so let me uh, first let me uh, try to solve this question now we are being told his current and future maximum consumption will be so if he is we have to find out the maximum current and future consumption okay so simple case if he consumes nothing in the future period so we have this very equation here okay if he consumes nothing in the future that means c2 will be equal to zero okay which will imply this whole term will be equal to zero then our current maximum consumption will be equal to c1 is equal to m2 upon 1 plus r okay plus capital M1 okay so just give the numbers uh, sorry these variables uh, the values okay so our M1 is equal to small M1 plus a a1 so M1 is 42 a1 is 18 so for the is the other guy shared so we will get here this will be equal to 42,000 plus 18,000 which comes out to be 60,000 okay so our current uh, maximum consumption will be equal to that is c1 will be equal to so our m2 is being given us as 33,000 30 
थ्री थाउजेंड प्लस वन प्लस रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट इज जीरो पॉइंट वन जीरो पॉइंट वन प्लस एम वन विच इज सिक्सटी थाउजेंड टेन थाउजेंड ओके सो वेन वी डिवाइड थर्टी थ्री थाउजेंड विद वन पॉइंट वन इट विल कम आउट टू बी यू नो इट विल कम आउट टू बी थर्टी थाउजेंड ओके इट विल ओनली कम आउट टू बी थर्टी थाउजेंड प्लस सिक्सटी थाउजेंड जो त्रे ओर पांच ओके विच इज इक्वल टू नाइंटी थाउजेंड सो ही कैन एट मैक्म कंज्यूम नाइंटी थाउजेंड इन द करंट पीरियड इफ ही इज नॉट कंज्यूमिंग एनी थिंग इन द फ्यूचर ओके सो आई शुड फर्स्ट रब दिस आउट टू मेक द थिंग्स मोर अंडरस्टैंडेबल हियर नाउ ओके सो दिस इज आवर यू नो करंट कंजम्पन and how can we show it graphically graphically we can show it like this ta 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 you go yet for it so let's denote consumption in the current period here consumption in the future period here and let us draw the budget constraint like this so actually what we got here the consumption in the first period is equal to 90000 that means he is consuming everything in the first period so he will be at either this intercept which is 90000 okay and um, so it will be equal to so this intercept is also equal to m2 upon 1 plus r plus m1 okay similarly if he is consuming nothing in the first period and all in the future period then in this case what will be Uh, his future maximum consumption. So let me try to show it here. Jai Masha. <laughs> so let me adjust here. So that means if C one that if C one is equal to zero, that means current consumption is equal to zero. So this term is equal to zero. Then we are left with uh, C two upon one plus R should be equal to M two upon one plus R plus. M one okay. If I transpose this term here, it will get. So, so let me show you here. Here, so this will become one uh, plus r m two divided by one plus r okay uh, plus one plus r capital M one okay. So this is capital M one. Then. Which implies so this will get cancelled. Our M two is equal to thirty three, thirty three thousand plus one plus R is uh, one plus R is one point uh, one plus one plus zero point one. This is one point one. Uh, so one point one, one point one into M one is sixty thousand. Okay. So when you solve this, will this is thirty three thousand? It will become sixty six thousand. So this comes out to be ninety nine thousand. Okay, so this is ninety nine thousand dollars. That means he will consume ninety nine thousand worth of consumption in period second if he is not consuming anything in the period first. Okay, so here the intercept is ninety nine thousand. Okay, so let me write it here ninety nine thousand. And what is the intercept here? Intercept. Uh, intercept will be M two, M two plus one plus R M one. Okay. And what was he currently, presently endowed with? So he had M one capital M one. And small M two as the current wealth and future income. Okay, so I hope I make the calculation right and the method was uh, correct. Okay, so uh, one thing that I got confused how to incorporate this asset uh, in the in the wealth. Okay, so I have made some mistakes. You can always rectify me. Okay, so the correct option should be at at present he can maximum consume. a uh, $90,000 worth of consumption and at future he can consume uh, in the period to 99,000 worth of consumption i hope i make myself clear in this video thank you